Okay, welcome back one more. So I did a little searching, and I realized I was mistaken that 100 is in the ultraviolet spectrum at the very base of it, <clears throat> at the border of X-ray, although some of them show it seemingly not at 100. I don't know. <clears throat> This one shows it to 10. Okay. So it's pretty much at the border of ultraviolet and x-ray. Oh, the nanometers. It said, it said micrometers, but I would... He said nanometers, so it doesn't matter what it said. He said nanometers. If nanometers is ultraviolet, then maybe, maybe it's true. Okay, let's keep going. I just wanted to update that first and foremost because clearly, <coughs> turn that off. I, um, my face is all glowing. What's up with this face? People are like, dude, you said you discovered the theory of everything. You don't know the exact wavelengths of the lights. <laughs> Doesn't even look like it. That's. Uh, <clears throat> that is very strange. It looks like it's... I haven't looked around... Somewhere. <clears throat> World Health Organization says 100 for C. I mean, it sounds like six to four hundred is probably <clears throat> a good range to say for the true spectrum. Let's see what Wikipedia lists it as. <clears throat> Extreme. <clears throat> Vacuum and extreme. Strongly absorbed by atmospheric oxygen. <coughs> Entirely ionizing radiation by some definitions. <clears throat> so that's a good sign. Since it, it, its purpose, 100 nanometers wavelength, is to ionize the air. <clears throat> okay. So maybe, I'm, I'll still just say maybe. I certainly see reasons to question, but at the same time, I see reasons to wonder also. <clears throat> I thought that was the proof positive when it was not in 100 nanometers. It was not in the range, but <clears throat> I, guess, I guess whatever I look, happened to stumble on when I did this, the search, <clears throat> whatever I stumbled on, it just happened to be presenting ultraviolet outside of the actual range that it is said to be. <clears throat> My bad. <laughs> <clears throat> I went the, re <clears throat> the reason I noticed this because I went to be like uh Randall <laughs> and then I was like okay let me find a second picture of the wavelengths and then I was like maybe I should make sure this is this image is appropriate <clears throat> and finally <laughs> by looking for more images and more like actually searching for the range <clears throat> That's when I was like, oh, I should have just searched for the range of ultraviolet. Anyway. Again, 
here's the jet engine here, the turbine, and again, we're simply sucking in the... Uh, Could you imagine this on a plane? Get these motherfucking snakes off oh, this motherfucker. The through a vacuum sucking in the uh, water and gas phase in the place was the place the same place my generator that we you just saw that we the caterpillar we've used that device back here to bring this through and then here's the the hot ex exhaust gases spinning around here and then this pipe here takes them out of the room. So anyway, the jet engine application was very successful and the same results, reducing the, the uh, exhaust temperature as in addition to recycling the waste energy coming through here, recycling that as effective fuel here, and it cleaned all the carbon off the jet turbine blades, just spotless, which is really, really good because that goes to an increase the temperature of operation of this by hundreds of degrees so so that bodes well for the bearing life and for the turbine blades it seems to protect them because they embed in the blades themselves and absorb any excess heat or stress next so again this is uh, the intake gas for the jet engine being pulled through the water and creating plasmoids on, in the, and, and pulling out water in its gas phase from that. The next. So there's a, some videos here that you can look at again on, online. And now we'll go on to section 10, which is. Which is this one. Chimney retrofit is basically again the waste energy <coughs> Just saying waste long energy that is produced by the burning of coal. It's only 34% energy efficient to the amount of energy that's in the coal. So what we're doing is we're recovering that waste energy and bringing it back into the burning furnace bed, and so that will actually then uh, be able to double the efficiency of those chimneys and throughout the world make them non-polluting, make them producing oxygen, not uh, CO2, not, not carbon monoxide, no hydrocarbons, and no smoke. So fantastic. <coughs> Next. So here's the prototype. Basically, there's just the burner shell, and then inside that there's an incinerator, inside that there's a, uh, a little uh, burner where we burn the coal and burn the uh, wood chips, or actually it's the wood pellets. So it's very simple. The, uh, the air goes up here, again, counter-opposing the cold air coming in through this bubbler. And there's out the water filler and um, the ionizer here. This is, so this ionizer, the gas, the gas goes down here, comes through here and goes back into the uh, the bed of the coal burning or the bed where the wood's burning or combination of in this case it was combination <coughs> of just thinking of heat exchange like hot flowing this way cold flowing this way even if there's some toroidal vortex zero point balance thing going on it seems like they would exchange pretty heavily. <clears throat> and then like the intake would heat up and then uh, the outtake temperature would heat up as a result because it would have a warmer temperature. And then the intake would get even hotter from the exchange so that it would just like run away to a hot temperature maybe. Just trying to think if this actually makes sense. Wood pellets and uh, coal, a ratio of 90% coal, 10% wood pellet. <clears throat> Maybe this gets cooled. I don't think it gets cooled. So the next. 
<coughs> the base is the top view, so exactly, exactly the same configuration. configuration. The next becomes called the bubble unit and uh, everything attached with you know filling it up with water and becomes cooled. <coughs> okay, so like becomes cooled by that process uh, seemingly going into the system. There now the effect of this system is when we put the gas analyzer on it was as I said no smoke coming out and no only oxygen. Okay, I think it's fine temperature wise. So, well, most, Most oxygen, oxygen, very small amounts of the original gases, gases like CO2 and carbon, and carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, monoxide completely eliminated. I don't know if it would do the thing he's saying, but I think, generally speaking, it would not run away temperature-wise. <coughs> Probably 95 or 98 percent elimination of the uh, CO2 next. So this is just a very simple setup. We did this setup for a client who asked uh, whether I could, I could build a prototype, prototype to prove that it would work. work. And I, I said, well, it's the waste energy recovery system. system. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't care, care about where that waste energy is coming from. It doesn't care whether it's gas, diesel, petrol, kerosene. It doesn't care whether it's a jet motor. It doesn't care whether it's a any design motor. It doesn't even care. And in this case, obviously, this means that you're just talking about your own fireplace and your own chimney. We can actually retrofit the same technology so you produce no smoke and you double the efficiency of your burner, so you use half as much wood, which, you know, has a, can build scale models. And that's the thing about the production of those models, it's, it's 100% scalable at any level. Next. And that, that is any level. I mean, you can put it on an atomic energy plant and recover the energy from the chimney. So, so and then next, it's the last slide. Uh, we go on to the thunderstorm generator schematics. <laughs> okay. I'm still not convinced. It's pretty interesting, generally speaking. Uh, it's only only 12 to 15 minutes, I guess. <sighs> How long are these? Hour. Hour. 20 minutes. Hour, 45 minutes, pretty long, okay, I mean, honestly, but as much as I, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, these are getting long, <laughs> that's kind of good, that there's more content, because, <clears throat> like, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, whatever, it's kind of, like, why even bother with these videos, one minute, they're practically, could have just been one, I guess, <clears throat> All of this could have been one, I guess. Okay. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> maybe, maybe I do like the concept of what he said, what he just said, where he said it can go on anything. It's a basically a waste ener waste energy capturing device, so it doesn't really care what the energy is sourced from. It's just capturing it, but <clears throat> like what energy? Heat. Are we just straight talking heat? Are we talking like prop? Because it's see, I don't know if it's heat would be like the quite the way to describe it, if at all. I, I really thought I could like have a sigh of relief just knowing. Okay, I feel comfortable leaning one way or the other. 
<clears throat> I know I've been an ass leaning one way generally in my assery, but like I haven't fully invested that way in my interpretation. I'm certainly trying to be open to the possibilities. <clears throat> And I'm not, like, it's not one of those things where I'm like, this is my turf. <laughs> I don't feel that way. Like, if someone came up with an actually useful novel invention, I'd be like, sweet. <clears throat> Which brings to mind this video, Maxwell Chikambatsu from Zimbabwe, who invented... <clears throat> And has had assassination attempts on his life. And interesting. Not interesting, but like, interesting. <clears throat> and, but it is seemingly a wireless receiver for cosmic energy. <clears throat> it just receives energy from the cosmos. From radio waves. So it's, way, it's a totally different way of doing it. <clears throat> But this is way more what I would look for as like the next technology is something that captures just radiant energy that's present always. <clears throat> it doesn't need some like system functioning around it. <clears throat> this is all capturing waste heat from processes. I mean, sure, there's probably more just like this <clears throat> in its own way but it seems it even needs the waste heat <clears throat> like uh, if it works it needs something doing some inefficient thing to then like capture its inefficiencies and like use the energy usefully so it's not in as inefficient as it was <clears throat> and maybe benefits by converting the molecules to less harmful molecules. Whereas here, <clears throat> he literally says it receives radio waves, and basically, my interpretation is, if it works, is it compiles them, like it takes radio waves, which are essentially very s subtle, very subtle, like this... <clears throat> if we go to electromagnetic spectrum I know I don't know the exact frequencies and all but gamma rays generally speaking are perceived largely as particulate and it becomes more more wave like the more subtle the energies <clears throat> So my, essentially what happens is as it gets lower wavelength or higher wavelength, lower energy, it begins to, um, have more, more subtle particles in higher abundances that fill, fill the space and create a wave over as they become more subtle and collective in <clears throat> operating in unison, then they start to function more like a wave than like a particle. And it, at radio waves, it, they become so subtle, but so abundant. <clears throat> That's the key. When he's talking about zero point energy, he's like making some shit up. No offense. But like, there's a zero point that's probably more like <clears throat> like a baseline undertone on that just like resonates in the cosmos resonates though but it's so like base that it's hard to read like access it without maybe something that manages to access it and then like concentrates it because it's subtle and like we don't use radio wave particles we use electrons so in order to make a, like a, a useful electron 
based energy out of it. He has like a coil system that seems like maybe, I mean, it's hard to tell what's going on. It seems there, like there's coils. I, I don't know if we can see in this video a good angle from the back that shows it better. You can definitely see it in other places from the back better. <clears throat> but like... <laughs> you can hear the certainty in his choice of words. Like, he's not like so cautious in his words. I feel like in a way where he's much more ironed out and like talks about this all the time and has really worked out a way to convey conversationally the concepts in his mind and that he has created in a way where like i i believe him that something's up with this guy's invention I don't know what he did, but something's like, something's up here. <clears throat> but it's totally different. Radio wave based. This one's like, just not. This to me doesn't really need anything else. If we can capture radiant energy from the cosmos that's just like accessible everywhere with just like an antenna and that's it and some kind of maybe controls to really control the reception of it so like that makes sense <clears throat> i don't know how it would be done but it would make sense to have some controls to uh, like fine tune the process and keep it within a range of functionality where it doesn't burn out if it works <clears throat> where there would, would be a control system like this like i don't think there's even a control system in this at all of that nature like a like a computer type of thing that's just like feedback like capturing data and and literally controlling the release and things of the process to optimize it like that's i'm pretty sure that's not happening but like of course that would happen if you actually were trying to optimize something that was functioning somewhat so like and he has a car this car that Supposedly is powered by something, a device like this, a plane, a helicopter, I think, a TV. I mean, people laugh at it, but I'm like, you never know, Gus. You never know. This guy might have picked up on some shoot. I don't know. I, I feel much more inclined to believe him. Then it is carefully managed with the microcontroller with the onboard computer in the machine. The See, like the, like the, it's he's not like fidgety about it. Like if we were to watch some of these, let's say here, um, report to Angus, which is we lost in our society because. We lost, we lost the sacred, sacred geometry, geometry, therefore we lost the relationship between energy and geometry. And that's, that's the bit that's missing. And geometry. Like, he's almost, like, thinking... He's thinking about what he's saying. Like, it's almost like he doesn't do this much, which is a little odd. 
Like, maybe based on the fact that he's hiding it until it was ready and, like, keeping it in the dark. <laughs> like, maybe he just truly doesn't interact with people about it, but that doesn't really make sense because he definitely does. Like, he's got co-workers, people working for him, like, seemingly. Uh, funders. Like, there's people involved. So... Like... He should be pretty ironed out, but he just doesn't seem to be at, whereas, like, again. Uh, that process is done with the computer because it varies usually depending with the loads. The machine is very intelligent, it analyzes how much load or how much voltage and amperage which is being drawn from the machine. That is carefully adjusted now and again by the microcontroller. So from the inverter side, uh, we have got like the filters. Like that's what you would definitely need if you are able to tap into the zero, actual zero-point energy. <clears throat> I feel like I said green was the zero-point. It's actually the balance point. It's more like the one-point. I think I said the zero-point. It's more the one-point. Zero-point is actually like zero, like as low as it can go. And the lower we can go, the more we can access that, oh, that base note that's like, just held it's like a um electronic keyboard or piano that it's like a piano you hit a note and it fades away but some some like electronic type of keyboard stuff you hit a note and it does not care it's just going and <laughs> as long as you're holding that note and that note is held and it's just resonating like vibrating at the baseline causing ripples up into the layers and then access able to be tapped into though because it's like resonating into like penetrating through like actually in the air around us always I just think this makes far more sense. That's my take. I mean, it's possible that this is useful in some way if it works. I mean, certainly if it works, it's useful. If it, if it does at all what he says, then it's useful. But I don't know if it does. This here, I feel more confident. So, Amaxo Chikumbuzo's inventions fake. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Master, a Zintec guy. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and if you do eventually end up liking the video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you like the work that I do on this channel, please consider partnering with me on Patreon, like these rockstar Patreons. So, are Maxo Chikumbutsu's inventions fake? That's the question that I've been getting on my last video that I posted about Maxo Chikumbutsu, that along with many other questions. So, in this video, I'll attempt to answer some of those questions. Personally, I feel like these inventions are in fact genuine. Now, imagine starting a company in 2009 and close to 40... I was like, if he says nasty bullshit, I'm gonna be like, par for the course for these videos. <laughs> years later, the company is still operational and you're dealing with fake products. Try doing that in the real world. You won't succeed. But anyway, don't take my word for it. Uh, actually, yeah, that, that argument's not... Accounting for Ponzi schemes, that's all. <laughs> the beauty about Max Ojikumbu's inventions is that when it comes to his off-grid generator, a team of engineers from the United States came into the country, which is Zimbabwe, 
tested these technologies and verified that it was in fact genuine. So nothing unusual, but the main point is that a meter away there's no frequencies being transmitted from a, a microwave tower uh, next to the part we're standing in. And I'm sure this cuts across all his other inventions. That video right there is pretty persuasive. The, I don't know where it is. The question that I probably see or the biggest question mark for me is why is it that when it comes to inventions that are coming from Africa or technologies that are emanating from Africa, there's always like a lot of questions. You never hear it. Like, uh, there's a uh, people in Asia or... It don't matter where this thing is coming from, everyone. Although like that it's coming from Zimbabwe, I think it is like all the more reason it hasn't really caught steam more so because it's just like almost it's like out of left field if you will for something like that but that kind of makes sense given it's a big world you know like it's not like they're not educated enough to possibly come up with something like clearly it's happening in a scale where it happened <laughs> so like i think that the zimbabwe thing does though make it just less detectable so it just it just makes it all the more appear as if it's not authentic but at the same time that like that to me makes it more likely to be real that it's coming out of Zimbabwe. I just, I really feel that way. I know that's maybe unscientific. Uh, in Europe, other parts of the world, they don't get questioned the way that things are questioned when it's in regard. I, I mean, again, though, the device, though, it don't matter. Like, if that was legit, like, the, it's the same as the Max Ball. It really is. Like, he's definitely getting, he's getting a lot of shit, me included. And if he's legitimately got an invention, then I mean, he's out of New Zealand. So, so I mean, I pro he probably is correct in what he's saying. It's just like in this instance, it does not matter where it's coming from. This invention is going to be hated on, naysayed, and just like prevented from actually being discussed in an orderly and open manner where we can figure out what is right or wrong if there is a validity and usefulness in it and begin to use it if so uh like that is much more difficult to actually occur in this instance than in this instance where like he's in new zealand He's a white dude, he knows some other white dude, who knows some other white dude. <laughs> the other white dude's got a show, you know how it goes off the chain. Now this white dude's got the, you know, where Maxwell Chikambatsu is killing it. They don't even know about him. Back to Africa. Perhaps the biggest problem is that Maxwell Chikambatsu happens to have... Uh, been brought up from Africa, and that's why so many questions are being asked. Now, his technologies has been displaying them for the world to see for such a long time, and if you wanted, especially when he did his presentations, you could actually critique, go check out the technologies for yourself. So, in short, his technologies are, in fact, genuine. So the other question I was getting from, uh, I, I take it these are guys who are probably in the tech and scientific field, they were actually arguing that you cannot harness power from uh, radiomagnetic waves. Well, this is what Max Chukumbuzo had to say. Looking at uh, radio frequency, nice. when people, the ordinary person wants to know what's this radio fre frequency that you are harnessing, where does it come from, and is it not finite? Uh, will, I, will we not have the, this machine and one day not have radio frequencies to harness? You know, when God created the, the Earth, he put some electromagnetic frequencies, as they are better known. I think if you had a number of guys from NASA when uh, they are going to the moon, they have the challenge of passing through some microwave frequent uh, energy. So we are taking what God has created. Uh, unfortunately, we have classified the 
the frequency, the particular frequency that we are using for some security reasons. As you know that we failed to file a patent because they said we are violating the laws of physics, so it's not industrial applicable. Uh, because of that, we went to the trade secret. Yeah, this is the patent office for you. I mean, it doesn't. They're like, free energy? I mean, never mind that you have a receiver that is receiving energy, so it's not really free energy when you've created a, basically an antenna, a functional antenna for the energy that's just there. It's, it's really just acknowledging what is and then using that understanding, that acknowledgement, to then uh, go forward. That route where we took some pieces of the machine and uh, classified them as trade secrets, just like what Coca-Cola did. The next question I was getting was, why isn't he getting support from the government? Or I don't think he quite answered the, what, he, what he was saying about how you can use radio frequencies, but you definitely can. Like, like I was saying, it really is the base note that, like, even though it, the the energy itself is very dispersed and subtle, if you will, it's so abundant that it's just like the source of energy, practically. It's almost like a star, at, like a black hole that emits from the base upward through the layers like the closer to the base the more it's gonna have pressure upward that's like re bubbling the the lava lamp of reality <clears throat> so like there's a lot of energy down there if we can tap into it it's really just that like dispersed yeah it's useless but if we can figure out how to like concentrate it and i that's really what he's like talking about i don't know if he uses the that, that type of terminology of concentrating but he's basically receiving it and then he has a coil that maybe like the way he designs the things i don't know and the coil is pretty basic so to have that like somehow concentrated i don't know but like the essentially the way he talks the things he says makes more sense or i would like to see this i would like to see his research his or i guess research too his inventions um give an equal scrutiny to what max max well Mal sorry, Maxwell. Malcolm Bendel is receiving and will receive regarding this stuff as a result of the uh, interactions on the Joe Rogan experience with Randall Carlson. Like, it's good that this is good. It's not bad. Like, I'm not saying, like, this needs to not get attention and this needs to get attention or Max Maxwell's stuff. I'm saying, like, he also definitely should have some attention when we're, like, if we're going to be looking for free energy type, basically, or new energy devices, taking that seriously, we shouldn't just, like, look at the ones that are, like, most on the, the radar like there's many of them and we should really expose ourselves to a larger spectrum in my searching this is by far the like most feasible thing i've ever come across that was actually like seemingly a useful technology to like change the world some things were cool like i've definitely come across cool things but in terms of like the actual direct application usefulness like this seems to blow everything else away even even what he's presented so far like if they both worked ooh, like it would be overshadowed completely by maxwell chikambatsu's invention because it makes it that obsolete because we're just tapping into the ether we don't need some like 
engine anymore. We just don't need the engines anymore. We can literally scrap them, turn them into antennas, and use the rest of the resources elsewhere kind of a thing, practically. I mean, obviously not completely and so on, but like if it worked. Like, there would come a time when we're like, why do we got all these engines that could be used to make these way more useful antennas? The country. This is what Maxwell had to say. Have you been supported locally? Uh, do you think you've been supported adequately here in the country? Um, and, and if so, how? If not, what else would you have expected? You know, it's said, but that is a... I think it's a painful reality of life. Mm. Uh, most of these inventors or people who, who achieve some other things, they are not recognized in their countries. Yes, I would want to say that I did not get the support that I thought I would get. I've been to Zimbabwe Science and Technologies, uh, so many uh, institutes. I That's a legitimate story. See the difference? One is hiding and then suddenly shows up in uh, this, like, thing. Whatever's happening here, I don't know what to make of it. Whatever's happening here, without, like, out of left field. I know maybe I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm maybe a little uh, biased, but I feel like I influenced it even... What do you mean you influenced it by my ancient Dwarka video? I'm like, you think you know physics? Bro, it's time. Let's go. I was, I was on the fence until now. Fuck this, it's coming out. <laughs> Sorry, Randall. <laughs> uh, we, got, we got some real physics. Psh, theory of everything, my ass. You don't even know. I never got any form of support, being moral or technical, not necessarily mean I was. Never got support. So if you think about it, this man, like in Zimbabwe, of all places, without support of like anyone who is spending energy, time and effort trying to get help from because he's like this is useful guys still manages to create the devices and just like has been trying to share it genuinely since like its infancy that makes sense to me. That's an honest story. This over here where things like he, he can't read his own slides completely. I mean, I know I can't read my own slides completely at times. I'm trying to think if like, I wonder if I sound like that because I, I know I'm not like, like, oblivious of what I'm talking about, let's say. <clears throat> I don't want to say he's oblivious. Obviously, he's not. He's very well informed on what he's talking about, but at the same time, he's like, seems to be just like reading someone else's words at times. So I'm a little confused on what to make of it all. Where over here, like, it's straight up like this dude. This ain't no question. There's no question what's going on here. was looking for financial support, no. But you see that uh, God brought people from outside the country. My f the first person that I work with, like I said, was Zek Wazara. Uh, I thank God for him. He did quite a lot. Then later on, I, work I worked with the, the late Dr. Teddy Diomida. He was an Angolan. Uh, he's the first person who did, uh, who helped me in a, in a bigger way, to say and his partner, uh, Mr. Luis Penala. Then he passed on in 2017. Uh, we were recognized in the United States of America to say, like I have said, you have seen the Americans, they had to come to Zimbabwe. They've flown in their scientists. They did a validation. They confirmed the machine is working. They started to help us. 
we never got the, that kind of recognition or support here in Zimbabwe. As far as, as, as I'm concerned, we have got a, a number of very educated people. Yes, I thank God for a few people. Uh, the Vice Chancellor for it, he sits on my board, he's my advisor, Engineer Pinto Kankamu, he's one of a kind, like I'm saying. Uh, he came to me, uh, he, he started to guide me how best I would perfect my technologies. But when we look at a country like Zimbabwe, with a lot of education, educated people, he was the only one who came. Not even the government came to support. So I think. I feel rude. I don't really know much much of anything about Zimbabwe. We need to start support our own. It's not easy. This journey has been very long. Um, sometimes we don't need money as investors. We just need, as inventors, to say we just need moral support. We just need maybe guidance. Perhaps the biggest question I was getting was, is he still alive? The short answer is yes. So the other question that I was getting was from people who wanted to buy uh, his self-powered TV or some of his other inventions. And some were saying they really wanted to invest in Maxwell. So the best thing for you guys is to just get in touch with him directly on his Instagram page. I'll leave the address below and even in the description. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, see you in the next video. This is, this right here, no offense, Colin, this is kind of like one of those things where there's this consensus that's been arrived at, like, okay, because we haven't figured out how to do it, we will conclude that the most power we can get out of radio waves is this much. And then pretty much just like call it a day on the on the process and ignore anyone who pr basically suggests to have maybe managed to tap in more substantially. <clears throat> like it, it reminds me of like I'm trying to think of a good a good example besides general examples <clears throat> like that the solar system atom model is false because the electron would spin into the nucleus and the end that kind of thing, where, like, we're not accounting for the presence of the ether that, like, applies a pressure and causes a actual equilibrium from its presence that when not accounted for in that instance because of the variables at play and it being a relevant one, it really becomes overwhelming that it varies enough that it doesn't match and then we say oh the electron would crash in so that means even though it would be nice for solar systems to be atom like they're not and then we basically concluded that and like moved on and anytime someone's like you know what about the we already did that we're doing this right now. Didn't you see? We're talking about quarks, bruh. Same for ether. Like, someone runs an experiment trying to prove ether, and because they don't fully understand it and come up with null results, people are like, therefore, because they were trying and they failed, ether doesn't exist. Boom. Ether doesn't exist. No more ether. Ether gone. What did you say about ether? The pseudoscientist. It's been proven. Ether doesn't exist. Space is a vacuum. 
<laughs> but like ether exists same thing to what's going on here that's what i'm saying is this is just something that we've arrived at but that doesn't mean that someone else won't prove it otherwise And, but, like, it is one of the main reasons why people who just kind of glance at it are like, radio waves. Nope. And, like, go about their life just thinking, nope. Like, straight up, nope. Like, especially when it's, like, educated. Oh, yeah, I am educated in this. No offense. I mean, I understand. <clears throat> because I am educated in this... I really understand that it's not possible and really I'm like that's it and then other people who are like like let's say like this person I figured but then I saw an engineer putting real numbers and I was like ah, thankfully someone is talking my language He just said he was talking bollocks. <laughs> Alright, guys. I gotta go to bed. I got pain in the morning. What am I doing? Peace out. See y'all later. Thanks for hanging out.